Hello, my name is Nick, and I still cannot hear out of this ear, and I will promptly see a doctor about it. So I've already done one long-ass pet peeve video for, you know, catharsis. There were some that were left out because I didn't want the video to be over an hour. Recently, I have gotten a comment that has finally annoyed me enough to make this one. Just take a look. I hate everything about that. <laughs> First problem with that comment, demanding or uh, expecting things from me. This hints at a much larger problem on creation platforms, and that is the entitlement to the creator. There is this entitlement that audiences seem to have nowadays where they think that they are important enough to demand shit or expect shit from the creator. No. We are going to establish a very healthy boundary right now, guys. You, of your own free will, subscribed, liked, etc. And I, of my own free will, uploaded a video or two. We do this stuff of our own free will, and I will not demand you to do anything, and you will not demand me to do anything, and neither of us are going to demand each other of things. There is a reason why I do not say like and subscribe in my video, because I find it stupid, and if you're going to like and subscribe, you will. I'm not going to demand that from you because it's entitled. And therefore, you demanding a certain type of video from me is also entitled. I'm not going to do it. In fact, every time you demand a certain type or ask me not to make a certain type of video, uh, it makes me want to do the opposite. So uh, because of a uh, good old fuckface here, uh, we're probably gonna have a few weeks of political videos uh, just to stir the pot. I can't believe I have to discipline you motherfuckers like unruly children, but that's what it's come to. The only time you are entitled to a product is when you have given that creator a specific amount of money to create that product in particular. That is the only time you are entitled to content. Understand? Okay, I'm glad we're on the same page. We need to set a healthy boundary there right now. I'm an individual, you're an individual, and uh, we're not gonna demand each other of shit. Got it? Second problem with that comment is they're essentially asking me not to be myself. They're essentially saying, can you please put on a fake smile for me, uh, be Emma Chamberlain, and give me watered down, palatable, pussy ass shit because I'm a crybaby. That's what I hear when I see comments like that. I am going to be very clear to you all right now. I am not running a business. I do not see my channel as a business and I'm not going to treat it like a business. If I did, I would run this channel very differently. You see, I know how to get successful overnight. I'm just not going to do it because I don't believe in that. You're going to get unfiltered, uncensored shit that my uh, funny wrinkle brain comes up with, okay? I am not going to change my content to pander to a certain group of people. I'm not going to upload things that uh, don't make me happy because a certain group of people demand it. I'm not going to put on a fake ass Emma Chamberlain smile and beg for you to subscribe to me because that's not how this works. This is not a business. I'm not going to run it like a business. I'm not going to water things down for you because you're a pussy and I'm not going to completely alter my personality or exclude important things to me because you're just another bored content zombie that uh, just wants fake people to say fake things to make you happy. It's not going to happen on this channel. If that's what you want on this channel, uh, you're not going to find it. I'm not going to be a fake Emma Chamberlain Dolan twins ass bitch. Understand? The third thing I don't like about this comment, how uh, they insinuate that I care whether or not they like me or not. Let's make it very clear, there are zero radical leftists on the internet that post their political views and think, wow, I sure hope this makes people like me. <laughs> At no point did I think uploading the 40 minute video called I'm a communist would make people like me. So what makes you think that I give a shit whether or not you like me or not? If you don't like me, then leave. In fact, I am begging some of you to just go. Since I've already established that I'm not gonna sit here and beg for likes and subscribers, same thing applies to you. I'm not gonna sit here and beg for your approval because I don't really care. That's just so wild to me. Like, she kind of like threatened me, or at least trying to. She was like, don't upload political videos and I won't unsubscribe. And it's like, 
unsubscribe. I don't care. Do it. You are not in the slightest threatening me. It would actually probably be a blessing if you unsubscribed. I don't want you here. <laughs> that entitled bullshit asking me to be a fake-ass YouTuber, it's never gonna fly. I'm never gonna do that. Funky fresh pet peeve number two, when people use my age as an argument. On one end, there are certain times where I understand it. If a 13-year-old is acting like a 13-year-old, yeah, bring up that they're a dumbass 13-year-old that doesn't understand what they're talking about. That makes sense. I get it. But in this scenario, if the 13-year-old has given a well-educated, well-thought-out argument and your first knee-jerk reaction is to say, you're a dumb 13-year-old, what do you know? I find that to be pathetic. I think that is a pathetic way to promote your own argument. It's low-hanging fruit, if you will. Now, I'm, I'm not going to say that adolescents don't act like dumbasses sometimes. That's uh, scientifically backed that adolescents act like dumbasses sometimes. I get it. I'm 19. I'm still a teenager, technically. I'm an adult, but I'm a teenager. My brain will not be fully developed. It is thought until 25 years old. With 13 year olds, they're going through puberty, which is a crazy time where the hormones are everywhere, uh, your amygdala's inflamed, and your frontal cortex still is not developed. There is a pattern in the way teenagers act, and I get that. But to say that this individual that you are talking to, who has shown that they are very capable of complex thought to completely invalidate that by saying you're just a dumbass teenager, what do you know? It will always come off to me as desperate. It's a desperate attempt to make your argument look better. If your argument was actually good, you would not need to bring that into the equation. And that's sort of where the understanding leaves me, I guess. Because if it is obvious that this adolescent can critically think, and this adolescent can research properly and uh, has obviously thought out their argument quite a bit, then bringing up their age does seem like a desperate attempt to make yours look better. And it never works for me, at least. And uh, I think that's just mostly talking about the more aggressive uses of my age to invalidate my arguments or an attempt to invalidate my arguments. Like I have shown, it doesn't affect me much because you kind of proven that you're desperate, that your argument is not good enough to stand alone, so you need to bring my age into it in a desperate attempt to make your argument at least 0.2% better. So I don't really care because I usually just see those people as desperate and pathetic. When it does actually start to bother me is when these 30-year-old millennials online project themselves onto me and attempt to play psychic and show me my future. That's when I start to get peeved. If you start the comment with, you remind me of myself when I was 19, and then continue that comment with condescending remarks that revolve around my age and how I will learn someday and uh, how uh, I will be less angry in a certain amount of time. Projecting onto me the grievances you have in relation to how you acted when you were 19 years old will always be obnoxious. I suggest you see a therapist about that. I'm not going to be your outlet for you to let out your frustrated grievances at your past self. Just because you see me in yourself does not, first of all, necessarily make it true. You could just be grasping for straws. But second of all, it uh, sort of strips the individuality that both of us have. I'm not you, and I will never be you. And I need you to stop projecting yourself onto me, and I need you to start seeing a therapist because I will not be your form of therapy. I will not be your micro form of therapy in my own comment section. I try to avoid doing it to people younger than me, and I expect the same from you. But another part of this is the fact that they will go on to try to be psychics. They will say, you will learn soon enough. Because you remind me of myself when I was 19, whether or not that's actually true or not, you will become me in the future. You will become me because apparently we are not different human beings. First flaw with that 
is the idea that life is linear. And that is, it's a much larger problem in societal ideology where people think that there are milestones. I don't like that ideology. I think that ideology puts a lot of pressure on people to be a certain way by the time they hit a certain age. And do you think millennials would sympathize with that more than any other generation? But I guess not. Life is not linear. I will not do the same things that you did at certain ages. I will not learn things that you did at certain ages. I may never learn the same things that you learned. I might have already learned certain things before you learned them. The fact of the matter is the learning process for a human is not linear and it's never been linear because uh, there are no set things that we need to learn and there are no set times where you need to learn them. The idea that this person is saying you will learn in due time, it makes me want to go, all right, where's your crystal ball? Please show me the set time in which I learn this lesson that you've seemingly learned. There are 13 year olds that learned lessons before I did. There are 13 year olds now that will never learn the lessons that I did. Maybe they've learned something that I haven't learned and I'm not going to assert my age upon them. I'm not going to project onto them. And I ask the same from you. I think the fact that these 30 year olds are all millennials really is interesting and I, I immediately psychoanalyze these people. But it's so easy when it's a millennial because the hypocrisy is so evident that I just, I can't look it over. I can't just gloss over the hypocrisy there. You do this because boomers made you feel like shit. Boomers asserted their age upon you. They condescended upon you and made you feel like shit. And now that you've turned what you think, what is societally standard as an acceptable age to have an opinion, you now think that you've unlocked this power within you. That a switch was flipped and now you are in nirvana. Because boomers made you feel that way. They set sort of an age where your opinion would finally be looked upon with respect. And now you want to do the same to people younger than you, to generations younger than you, because you want to take out that grievance of boomers against the generations younger than you. And it's so, so sad. It's so sad to watch, I think, especially because I saw a lot of millennials saying, let's not be like boomers. Let's not do that. Let's respect people younger than us. A certain amount of millennials did not do that. They got to the point where they were 30 and they went, finally, I now have power in the eyes of the boomer. I am now going to assert my dominance on the 19 year old on the internet. It's just so pathetic. It's so sad. And I really wish you would see a therapist about this. <laughs> and to the millennials that have not succumbed to the psychological abuse that boomers put you guys through, uh, I congratulate you and I would like to extend the olive tree branch and become your ally. I, I do think millennials would gain a lot from becoming allies with Generation Z right now. Pet peeve number three, there is this phenomenon. I have analyze this way too much. A video will have a certain blanket overlying message, but the counterclaims in the comments will be micro tangents is what I'm calling them. Uh, it's usually people going, what if, what if, what if, what if, or what about, what about, what about, what about. They break off into these micro tangents as if this micro tangent will somehow invalidate the overall blanket message of the video. And uh, it could be an innocent just wants to debate some more, but it could also be a trying to invalidate the entire argument and its blanket statements with micro tangents that are usually situational. To use these micro tangents to completely try to overthrow the message of the video, the overall message of the video. It's not a sustainable argument, by the way, because they are usually situational arguments. Okay, so in the past I have asserted that it is entitlement and it's demanding to ask me for my time and energy to cite everything that I've ever said. And it makes you look like a child that cannot use Google. People will 
always twist that argument and say, okay, but citing your sources is a good skill to have and it makes your argument look better. There was at no point a time where I said anything otherwise. They are going into a micro tangent to try to invalidate the overall argument. The overall argument is demanding someone's time and energy in any capacity will always be entitlement. Never in that video or any of the times that I've ever mentioned it have I said that I will never cite any sources. I've done it before in the past. The proof is in the pudding. I, however, do it depending on my own criteria of what is important and what is not important. It is my criteria. I will choose to use my time and energy how I feel is necessary. For instance, I did not feel like citing the sources for a bunch of dumbass fucking celebrities was really necessary because you own Google and they're a bunch of stupid fucking Western celebrities. The argument is, do not demand things from me. Do not demand my time and energy. The argument was not, nobody should cite their sources ever, or I don't think citing your sources is a good skill to have. That was not the argument. Yet people would go on micro tangents going, uh, citing your sources is a good skill to have. It makes your argument look better, blah, 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 blah. That does not apply to the overall blanket message. No matter if it does make your argument look better or is a good skill to have, the fact of the matter is you should not be an indignant child demanding people's time and energy. That's the message. And this has happened several times where I will have a overall message, but people will go into micro tangents or micro arguments about the overall message in the comments focusing on one tiny aspect going into micro arguments and micro tangents about that in the comments section will not change that blanket general argument. Fourth pet peeve, stop thinking you're always right, quote unquote. If you have said this to me or anybody else in the past, you are a hypocrite. And well, first of all, you think you are right in thinking that I think I'm always right, correct? Well, you've already completely invalidated your argument in thinking that because you are accusing me of thinking that I'm always right when you think you are right in that statement. Do you not think you are right when saying that if you've said it so confidently on the internet? Everybody thinks that they're right, especially if you have an opinion that you thought was worked on enough to say out loud, of course you think you're right. Nobody says a half-assed opinion that they think is wrong, which is why the stop thinking you're always right is such an absurd comment. It's such an absurd comment because they're insinuating that they've never thought that they were right ever. If you didn't think you were right ever, then you would never have a solid opinion on anything ever because the reason why people have opinions is because they think they're right about that opinion. You would not have an opinion if you thought that opinion was wrong. You would not so confidently say an opinion out loud unless you thought you were right. But yeah, anyways, you're a hypocrite because in a sense, we all think we are right as we stockpile new information and create an opinion. And once we get some new information that you would like to accept into your uh, heuristic processes, it'll go through that process and be adopted, and then you will have a new right. That's how opinions work. And uh, the, the cycle continues. You have an opinion, someone else has a good counterclaim, and you would like to cherry pick good ideas out of that counterclaim and discard the bad ones, and then you adopt it into your own processes. And then that's the new right and the cycle continues. There's no such thing as someone that doesn't think that they're right if they are saying their opinion. That's literally why they're saying their opinion. This is more about politics, if anything. Okay, so last pet peeve is the use of the word double standard, or phrase, I suppose. And I see this so much on Twitter, people will say, ooh, the double standard, as if they did something. Now, when you look up the definition of double standard, you're already assaulted with two different 
definitions that imply different things, which makes it difficult for me to go about this argument. The funky Google definition reads, a rule or principle which is unfairly applied in different ways to different people or groups. Um, the Wikipedia definition reads, a double standard is the application of different sets of principles for situations that are, in principle, the same and is often used to describe an advantage that is given to one party. I feel like that's different. One of them focuses on two different groups getting two different sets of standards, and the other one is more focusing on how the situation is the same, but two different principles are applied. I think I can go about this argument with both of those definitions in mind. So um, with those definitions in mind, let's go over why uh, a gay person making a straight joke is not the same as a straight person making a gay joke, because that is usually where I see it. It's basically a gay person, ironically and satirically, goes, haha, straight people, icky. And then the heterosexuals have a uh, hissy fit and go, mm -hmm, double standard. If I said gay people icky, I would be crucified. Yeah, sir. They are different situations. And um, that's where I think I can shoehorn both of these definitions into the argument because, well, first of all, in order for it to be a double standard, it would need to be the same situation. The oppressed and the oppressor are not the same situation. One of these people has power and the other doesn't in the situation. So it cannot be a double standard unless it is the same situation. What is not a double standard is when the oppressed makes jokes about their oppressor or says they dislike their oppressor as a way to cope with trauma. In what way is that the same as the oppressor oppressing people? Because in both of these definitions, it either says, A, it needs to be unfair, uh, I think that's fair. If the oppressor has spent their entire life oppressing you and making your life a living hell and uh, effectively causing you trauma, it would be a fair reaction for the group to uh, joke about it or uh, vent their frustrations at that abuse. That's fair. There is no double standard there because that's fair. If we look at the other definition here, it claims that the situations need to be the same. It can't be a double standard because the oppressor and the oppressed are not the same. They are not situations that can be compared because they are not the same. One is the abuser and the other is the abused. Saying that they are the same would effectively uh, be the equivalent to this bully that beats up this kid every day. And then one day, this kid turns around and finally punches back. But then the bully cries about it and says that you're just as bad as me. No, he finally defended himself, did he not? And you were the bully. You were the one with the power for a long time, constantly beating on this uh, weaker person. And yet, when they fought back in a empowering way, you claim that they're doing the same thing as you did. No, that's not the same situation. It cannot be compared. And the phrase double standard is used pretty willy-nilly in that aspect on Twitter a lot. No, black people making a white people joke will never be the same as white people making a black people joke because one of these people have the power and the other does not. People love to learn new buzzwords on Twitter and then use them until they die. And I think double standard is one of those. Certain people that use them should not be using them because they don't know how to use them. I am so tired and I still can't hear.